Welcome back to the Julian J. Franco Show, a show where I bring to you people who I am genuinely fascinated on and people who I would want to hang out with behind the scenes. And Byron Katie is a wonderful author, speaker, and one of the most profound spiritual teachers of our time. And I'm sure Oprah Winfrey agrees with me on that. She is the creator of a process known as The Work, which allows you to inquire within. And trust me, you will not be the same individual or see things the same after giving it a try. She's transformed millions of lives around the world through not only the work with her beautiful pieces of literature, which include Loving What Is, A Thousand Names for Joy, and A Mind at Home with Itself. Now, I just want to say that the work has truly changed me. The more I meditate on these questions, it not only shifts the way I see the world, but more importantly, how I treat the people in my life. So Katie, thank you so much for doing that. And, and just for the listeners right now that aren't aware of who Byron Katie is, she's done the work on people who have been through war, rape, torture, the death of a loved one, uh, even uh, children. So she's no joke and somebody who really knows what she's doing. And before we begin this interview, I just like to start off with some comments, you know, while doing the research for the show. And I just saw these comments over and over and over, but I only picked three. So I'm going to give it to you. Number one, this was the best thing I've ever listened to. She infuses this work with so much love. Number two, she has been the biggest and deepest shift in my life so freaking deep and the third one is i think byron katie is just a real thing she's pure and her intent is only to serve she brings people back to reality so quickly and that was by tony robbins so byron katie welcome to the show thank you so much for being here how do you feel when you hear comments like that about the work and about katie Oh, you know, um, I love listening to it, Julian, because I, I, it's clearly not about me. It's about other people's experience and perceptions. So I'm out of there and I get to hear who they are. I hear how they are in touch with something so beautiful, even though they may give me the credit. You know, I've got a great job. Um, they someone might say no one cares about me and i say is it true and then they drop into themselves and what meets that question is it true within them is the power and so i kick back take all the credit which of course i cannot <laughs> because i know the power that they're in touch with and that is you know we talk about it's the truth that sets us free and i'm going well <laughs> Where do I find it? What is it? What are they talking about? Is it a physical search? Is it a, you know, and why can't I see it? Why can't I find it? It's not fair they do, I don't, you know, all of that. But the work inquiry makes it so clear. It's like, they just, he hurt me and met with that question. If we use it enough, it becomes a part of our brain. He doesn't care about me in that automatic, is it true? Are you sure? And notice what happens when you, when that thought hits your head and who would you be without it? And that's that the world opens up again, the real world, not the world of imagination, but the real world, I call it the friendly universe. And it's, it's, it's beyond what we would think and believe it to be because we would short change it. You know, oh, I think it's this and I believe it's that. And, you know, I'm just guessing until I'm shown. And as a skeptic, I really had to be shown to no, no woo woo. Just give me the real deal. And that's what we all deserve. And I'm not downing woo woo because for some of us, that is where we get our first hits and it gives it that reference and and uh i'm 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 for it all <laughs> katie you are incredible at what you do like not even two minutes into it and you get in, into your workshop mode you're already teaching you are preaching not only what the work is but what you've lived for over 30 years now and just one thing i just want to go to your personal relationship with your husband stephen mitchell who yeah. is an incredible guy i loved working with him and I worked with a lot of people who are really well known, really well established, high figure public figures as yourself and their teams, they're functional and they're efficient, but they don't really have that sense of hospitality or 
that courtesy that I felt working with your team. And, you know, Stephen Mitchell was obviously a big part of that. And when I was looking into his interviews, he never shies away from plugging the work. He loves to talk about you. He's always telling people about, you know, the work.com. Everything's free there. You can just go. I really love and value that. So I was just curious, how does Katie feel being his wife? Like what, you know, being a wife to somebody else who's an author who, who practices stillness. I, I was just curious, what's that like for you? Well, first, what you were saying, like he's 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 always saying, you know, like like sharing me in in his interviews and things like that. And my thought is, oh, he's just such a husband, <laughs> he's just such a husband. And 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 living with Stephen is like, you know, it's he's so brilliant, and I'm the opposite. I just, you know, I I don't get, I I I don't. It, oh my God, he's just brilliant. I wouldn't begin to compare like most people with the um, gift of his mind and what he's done with that kind of IQ and intelligence. He has focused on one thing from the, from what, from his teens. And it is what I call what matters. He wanted also to find a way out of suffering. And so he, he took, he um, stepped into Zen, Zen Buddhism and, um, and, <laughs> and on and on and on. But what do I, what do I, what it's, it's, it's heaven to live with Stephen. You know, I don't have to understand. And if I ask him, he's so patient and he'll just show me from scratch and which is way up there is too, you know, too much for me sometimes anyway. But yeah, to live on a, with a brilliant mind like that. And of course he considers my mind brilliant. And, uh, but we come from opposite ideas of what is brilliance. The kind of brilliance I have, everyone has access, access to. His brilliant uh, mind, and those of us who are, are, oh my gosh, um, we just don't get how to get through high school. We just are, we, we don't get it. Other people can read and write and this and that, do math, but then there's some of us, but in what I am in touch with and what Stephen's in touch with is way beyond that. It's for everyone, it's for everyone everyone without exception. No one has more. Wisdom than another. It's just not going to happen. I have tested this. Anyone with an open mind can find their way back to what matters. Mm. Yeah, that's powerful. And, and one thing that talking about wisdom that I loved hearing you say is you're a very modest individual, Katie. And you said, look, it's not about the questions. It's about the, the wisdom that the questions bring forward. Yes. When you said that, I was just blown away. And again, Katie, get, be prepared for me to throw a lot of your quotes right back at you because obviously you are good at, at speaking and writing and that's why you've been such a successful author. Now, one thing, when anybody's researching you or just watching your videos, your workshops, your lectures, one thing that I was taken aback from is just, Katie, you probably heard the same questions and concerns over and over and over when people are probably raising their hands and they begin to ask you something or begin to paint, you know, this little picture of the scenario that they're living through. I'm sure within five seconds, you already know how they're going to finish. You probably already know what they're going to say. How do you remain so present and so you're such an amazing active listener where other people will probably be bored by that point. They're like, look, I know what you're going to say. They they'd probably want to cut them off. So how do you remain so present? What, what I saw in a moment of stillness all those years ago, and it was all the ego says is I want, I need, you should, I shouldn't, I don't ever want to, you did that. That's it, like six things with different varieties and different languages, but there are no new stressful thoughts. So I have gosh, I'm not answering your question either. It's, it's, I don't, honey, I don't. That would be, I'd have to be in a kind of future or a state of anticipating, and then I'd miss the surprise. 
if I think I already know what they're going to say, I'm going to miss it. So I want to know. It's I've done enough sitting in myself, respecting what meets that presence, that they are nothing more than my internal. Those people that come to me, they are my internal. Would I be rude to that? Would I be unkind to that? Would I be so self-serving as that? So egoic as, it's just me with me. So I'm only always there. Like you are who I believe you to be. And if I don't believe that, I get you. Maybe not someone else's, Julian, but I've got my own. And that I respect. I love, I appreciate your service to all of us. It's right-mindedness because anything less than that is, um, it doesn't come out of our true nature. It's, <laughs> beauty is the surprise. What we're thinking and believing that brings on pain and fear. Um, that's old story. Beautifully said, Katie. Um, and one thing that I really do admire about you, not only are you great at communicating your thoughts, but everything that you have said, your actions have proved it to be true. So that's one thing. That's why I'm a really big fan of you. You are genuine with a capital G. So continue doing that. Now, before we get into the work, something that all our listeners who know you and, and who have been following you, they probably very curious what's the space like between writing a book, getting on stage, doing these workshops? Like what do you, what does Katie enjoy doing on a personal level when she's not, you know, trying to transform the lives and perspectives of millions of people? Oh gosh. Um, it'd be like breakfast, lunch, dinner, shower, brush my teeth. <laughs> yeah. There's never, there's nothing more, more exciting than, than, like walking by a sink full of dishes and and it shows me there's something to do it's like oh there's something to do so if you know i just follow the simple direction but in my in before the work found me it would be like well it's not my turn they're not my dishes you know they're uh, why do i have to do everything blah da 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 well steven that or you know it's just my Oh, on and on. Now that is work. Just following the simple direction. It's a service. No one has to find out about. No one has to know. No one has to give me credit. Nothing. It's a secret life. I get out of bed. I see it's unmade. I'm out of bed. God, show me what do you want of me? Just make the bed up. Just follow the simple direction. But I want to do something great in the world. Well, first, just do the dishes. If you can do that and not make it a drudgery, maybe I'll call you to something else. Presence, noticing. Just, oh, there's just, you know, how can anyone be bored when there's so much around us that are that are calling us. And if we can do that, yeah, we, we, the next job can enter. Oh man, this is already one of my favorite shows that, that I've ever done, Katie. It's, it's truly fascinating. I was going to ask you, why are so many of us bored with our menial, you know, the, the tedious task of the day? And you just answered that question without me having to go there. So one of the quotes that I absolutely loved about you, and this really just encapsulates encapsulates who you are as a person, it, it, it really gives a good summary of what Byron Katie is and what she tries to do. And this is the quote, I prefer working my thoughts as opposed to spreading more difficulty into the world. So once I, once I heard you say that, I thought that was so beautifully put. And so many of us don't do that. We are so quick to look out and blame everyone else for our suffering. So do you think that's our innate, you know, upbringing as a human just to like always point the finger out, Katie? 
Well, it's it's the ego. It's got to stay identified as something because ego is a state of mind and you can't touch a state of mind. You can't take it out and look at it in your hand. I mean, it's mind, it's not object. So um, so to um, to work with the mind is is to change everything. It shifts it, it shifts the world. And Julian, I, I forgot your question. <laughs> it, it, it's basically exactly what you said. It's my question was, why are we, Katie, so quick to point the finger and look out and blame everyone else but ourselves? Like you hurt my feelings, I think. So, and now I'm going to tell the world, like, Julian this, Julian that, dun, 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 dun. it's, it's my, my depression is his fault. Dun, 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 dun. You know, I need therapy because of him. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so... If I look to myself, and that's the last place we want to look, uh, if we really look to ourselves, like it's, it's, he hurt my feelings, is it true? And just sit in that and contemplate, is it true? We become enlightened, the enlightened mind. How do I react when I believe the thought? I see an image of you in the past where you said what you said and you did what you did. And I, and that's not you, that is an image in my head, meaning image, imagining. So that's not you, that's my imagined you. <laughs> that's in me. So then I see the future where you're gonna do it again, where you're probably gonna do it tomorrow. You're gonna you're gonna say and do that thing that hurts my feelings so so to the quick. And and so I've got you in to my left and you to my right in my head. Okay, so that's how the ego stays identified. Because each image I have of, of you, I have me there too. So I am self-identified as, as that. And you're there to hold that up in my mind's eye, only it's not you, it's pure imagination. So I um have you ever had a thought and those of you listening have you ever had a thought that wasn't about you it doesn't happen like oh i love the sky i think that tree is incredibly beautiful i think you know it's like who needs god when you have your opinion it's just but we it leaves us absent that state of gratitude to see like that fourth question i offer people the fourth and that who would you be just in this moment without the thought you hurt my feelings you know what is the world without that and then i can see you in my mind's eye the story has dropped off and i see something beautiful so now I'm awake to the cause of my suffering. It wasn't you at all. I mean, you're fictitious all the way through. Like, um, I love the idea of like Stephen, I'm, I, I get up very, very early. He gets up later and, and I can hear him walking in to the breakfast table and, and I hear him and it's so, oh, Julian, it's so exciting because I don't know that it's him. I see an image of Stephen walking down as I listen to the noise, but I don't know it's him. And the thoughts are his, his, the footsteps are so familiar. No one walks like that in those shoes. And, and, but I still don't know. And then when he steps in to my side, it's like I've never seen this man in my entire life. He is brand new. And, and so there's nothing not to love. I mean, it's just, he's pure. And, and it, when I look to myself, that Stephen is pure to me. So it, it, it's like, um, but he's walking down the hall. If I had, uh, yeah, well, here he comes. You know, I wonder if he remembers what he said to me last night. And I wonder if, he, if he's gonna make excuses. Da, 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 you know, all that stuff from my old world. Then he comes in and he says, good morning, honey. And I think, yeah, sure, yep, yep. Okay, so what happened there? Am I seeing Stephen? Or am I seeing, or is that Stephen my imagination? So if I'm rude to him or punishing him, I'm punishing the wrong man. I'm punishing this as 
the Stephen I am dreaming him to be. That's why we feel guilty. And guilt is the, the, the most fertile, fertile ground for addiction. You know, if you look at anything you're addicted to, any of your listeners, anything, when you, when it comes to like you see in your head, the, the chocolate ice cream or whatever it is you said, or the, 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 the alcohol, the, whatever it is, when that hits you, if you, you know, act on it or not, it doesn't matter. But if you just take a moment before you do act on it and notice what was in your head just prior to that. It was it was that Julian dun 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 and what I said and did like you hurt me a thousandfold, and I said one little ugly thing. Okay, that's 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 it. You can hurt me a world full, but if I hurt you one teeny tiny bit, and that is what I imagine is hurtful. What I experience is hurtful because I'm the only one I'm dealing with. That's it. That's until I take care of that. It is unfinished business. And that's what those judge your neighbor worksheets are about <laughs> on my website. And you just, it's just unfinished business. And this is our school. And we have opportunity in earth school to get to the bottom of the cause of suffering and how to end it. And everything, all the listeners, please, thework.com, buyercarity.com. She provides everything for free, which I think is just a testament of who you are. You've dedicated your life to this. You give away all this work for free. And one other thing about you, you have the best marketing plan in the world. And why is that? Because I have a big circle of friends, colleagues, and one person out of each of those little clusters of my friendships Hey, have you ever heard of the work? You spread like fire because word of mouth. Other people have billboards, they have this, they have this, these crazy PR agencies. But what is it about the work that you think people just, they resonate on so quickly? There's no fluff. It's just, it's, it's, it's incredible. But what do you give the success to the work to? Uh, that it is free. It's in all of us. And we shouldn't have to pay for what we've already got. And we have we have the answer to um, what is real and and what is fake. Yeah. And let me see if there's another answer to that. People shouldn't um, have to pay for what works. If I if I have something valuable, it came to me and I have something valuable in my experience for me. It came freely, Julian, it was a, a moment on the floor where I just, I just saw how my world was created and how to end it. And I didn't, I couldn't have prayed for that. I didn't, I didn't have a reference for what to pray for. I just wanted the suffering to stop. So if it came freely to me, it came through the right person because it's got to go out the way it came. And other people charge for it. And, um, you know, I charge for it too. Like a, a nine day school for the work. I can't, I, I don't have a quarter of a million dollar deposit to put down on a hotel to reserve it for a year in advance because they won't take it. But, oh God, you know. So um, um, I do. And the way I balance that is it's always free on the work.com. And, and, it, it, it's got to be. It's got to be. Yeah. That's yeah. That's a beautiful balance because for the people who can't do those nine day classes with you, you know, they have the work.com always made available and free. And the people who can do those classes, they have the funds, they have the money, so they have yeah. the blessing and they probably think you're charging, you know, to, you need to charge more, you know, because they really love yeah. what you do. And Katie, the amount of shifting in perspective that you have given to people, it's really invaluable. So again, I can sing you praises for the rest of the podcast, but let's continue. For the listeners who aren't watching this on video, Katie, to anybody, looks extremely healthy. If you hear her resume and her work experience, you might be jealous. You know, she has a successful marriage. She she does well financially. Her career is fantastic. She's uh, an excellent author. 
And you may think, wow, the world is, you know, was given to her, but there was a time where she was over 200 pounds and she was abusing alcohol and pills and, and she felt depressed for a decade. So Katie, I, I just didn't want to, you know, continue the podcast without people knowing that you've been through your, your hell, so to speak. So the people who are going through hell, who have these addictions, who just don't, they wake up and they go, why am I even up? Why am I even awake? What, what am I going to do today? What's that little bit of hope that you would give them from somebody who's actually been there? That if I can do this, you can do it. And it does take an open mind. And I don't know how to give someone an open mind. So that's what's our mind open. Like the gift I receive, that's the gift. If they're open to it, it can be given. But how do you, how do you, how do you open to it? How do we know what it is? An open mind. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a window. And these questions, these four questions, like the first one, is it true? Um, you, you, like, what is depressing me? Like, um, no one loves me. I'm all alone. Okay, so I take one of those. No one loves me. Is it true? And then if my mind opens, if I'm open to be shown, then what meets it will shift a life the way mine was shifted. And I assume because that's all that did happen to me. Beautiful, Katie. Now, for the people listening, if we can just go through the four questions with this scenario, somebody's in a relationship and they sit down with you, Katie, and they go, he doesn't really care about me. I, I feel it. Okay, so I would say he doesn't care about you. Find the situation in the past where you were believing that. You know, were you in bed depressed? Were you um, sitting alone and you're, you know, on, on computer? Are you on the phone with him? You'll get the situation. We're going to meditate in that situation from here now. So um, he doesn't, he doesn't, what was it? He doesn't care. He doesn't. He doesn't really care about me. He doesn't, he doesn't care about you. Is it true? And then they meditate in that, in that situation. He doesn't care about you. Is it true? And in that situation, be there now, meditating there. How do you react? Witness. How do you react? What happens? Emotionally and in your mind's eye, those images of past, future, notice how you react when you believe the thought. He doesn't care about you. And then they just witness. It's shown. You don't guess. It's there. And then you can see your part. You know, you see what you have, what, how you react, and you see where guilt begins. And they're still taking the blame, but my part. Okay, so how I react when I believe the thought. So I meditate there, I invite them to. And then that last question, okay, be there now in that same situation. Witness, who are you without the thought? He doesn't care about you. Just take that away. Listen to his words on the phone. Don't put more on them or less on them than there are. Just drop your story, drop the images, be present. Listen to his words. Who would you be in that situation without the thought he doesn't care about you? It's so, it's so uh, enlightening. You know, you can, you, you can sit in just one thing like that for an hour or, or five minutes and just come out more enlightened than when you went in. And more enlightened is, um, is a big deal. It's, it's a big deal because it goes across the board, you know, of everything, everything we experience. So the four questions, and then I invite them to turn the thought around. He doesn't, he doesn't care about me. Turned around. Okay. And then we try them on. It's not another religion. We don't attach to them. We just try it on to see, you know, how does, does that fit? So he doesn't care about me and opposite. I don't care about him. Okay, so in that situation, where is it that I was uncaring? 
I see I wasn't listening. I see I was overriding him. I was interrupting him. I see I was accusing him. I wasn't caring about him. And I just sit in that and that can bring a lot of tears because he was cruel when I started and now I'm like, whoa, because I've been justifying it. But no, I see. Now I'm seeing what hurts me, not what he says or does, but my part. And then I also see that, that he, in that situation, is who I imagined him to be. That fourth question shows that up, not who he really was. So, um, and then another turnaround, he doesn't care about me. I don't care about me. Okay, so in that situation, where is it that I was uncaring toward myself? So this is where I might pick up where I lied. Like maybe he said something and I owned it and it wasn't mine. And I just meditate there. I'm in that situation anchored there. And Julian, as this stuff shows up for people in 12 step programs, or people in the practice of an active practice of forgiveness. Everything in that third question that shows up shows me what I need to admit to him about him about me. When I'm ready, not ahead of my time, I need to do a whole worksheet before maybe I'm going to go there. But what I am what I need to admit, apologize for and make right and start over. It's an ego killer. It destroys that false eye. It will just extinguish, it will just obliterate anything that's not validly a product of our true nature as opposed to ego. So he doesn't care about me. I don't care about me. He does care about me. So now that I can hear him on the phone call and I, the, the phone call that I couldn't hear then, I can hear, let's see, where is it he was caring? And I've got answers now because I'm awake. I've gone through these four questions and, and that's just number one on the worksheet. So by the time you end it, it's just like, I'm willing that he doesn't care about me. I look forward that he doesn't care about me again, because if I'm upset about it, if I don't feel compassion toward him and connection toward him, or if I'm at war with him, it is unfinished business and earth school. And so it's, you know, what, what's the worst going to happen in my life? One more worksheet, Earth School. And you know, I'm, I look forward to life and show me it's what I'm here for. And, and um, so, you know, just catching up with, oh, oh my goodness. Some would call it the love of God connection the living truth i mean there's so many phrases for being in the presence as the presence of what matters and you know if no one ever 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 did the work you know they're not supposed to you know, I'm the, every time I work with another human being, they are enlightening me. So it's, it's a, a privilege, this gift. Katie, because you have existed and because of what you accomplish day in and day out, this world is much more kinder, much more reflective, 
much more compassionate. Um, like you, like you said previously, a lot of people get divorces, they commit suicide, or they even kill people because of the thoughts that they believe. Yeah. So the fact that you're giving people this tool to inquire within, I do not take this lightly, Katie. Like you are a big deal, and what you do is is, is incredible. Like. Katie, you don't have to lift the finger for the rest of your life and you've already, that's it, you're done. You know, you've already earned whatever is coming your way and I hope more comes your way. So I just have this one, one last question before we jump into the relationship aspect. But you said previously, you know, like the only time that we suffer is when we believe a thought that argues with what is, right? So I, I can give you- yeah, mm -hmm. with, with what is reality. And I can give you just a little example. Like when I walk out of here and I get into my Toyota, I'm pissed off because I wish I was getting into a Lamborghini, you know? So it's like, it, it, it's those little things. But what practice can we just take forward in our life that's a simple one that just helps us be with what reality is? Well, you know, it's um, the practice. Anyone that sits in this practice, um, would have a thought like that and just laugh with the understanding that whatever your mindset is in that Toyota, you're gonna take as you open the car door to your Lamborghini. You know, it's it just can't be about the car. It's dissatisfaction, a lack of gratitude. It's it's um, it just makes a Toyota look. So, and then you see someone in a Lamborghini and, and, and there you are in your toy, Toyota and all you feel, you look over there and you think, oh my God, you, it, it's not even a thought. You just think, oh, I hope he loves it. But chances are you love your Toyota more than he's loving that Lamborghini. I mean, you just, I mean, and he could be in either car or you could be in either car. The worst that can happen in any car you're driving is what you're thinking and believing. It's just not, it's just, it's a state of mind, not a state of object. Wow, that was so good. Okay, Katie, that was exceptional. Now, I just have two questions on the relationship aspect. And again, when I was preparing for this interview, Katie, I said, you know what, why should I be asking specific questions on relationships. You've been there, done that. When it comes to your workshops, what, what's probably like one of the biggest things that prevent, one of the, what are these obstacles that prevent people from being in long-term relationships? Oh, you know, the answer is the same, what we're thinking and believing. And um, uh, so what I, let's say I married Stephen because he was just unacceptable. He was da, 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 all of that. Well, then I marry someone else and what I believed onto him, I'm going to believe on to the next guy. It's a state of mind and it doesn't shift with, you know, we can marry someone that, that just gives us everything, doesn't argue with us. We get to be right all the time. And now they're a wuss and now they're, you know, and now they're not telling us the truth and now they're boring. And I'm, it's a state of mind. So Stephen, is who I believe him to be. He can never be more or less than that. Now he's married to a woman I've never met. I am his Byron Katie. Who I am as a wife is up to him. I do my best and, and it doesn't get better than that. If, if I don't love who I'm married to, I look to myself. Now, if, if, um, if we have different, um, very different ideas about lifestyles. Like he doesn't want to leave the house and I'm very active out of the house and this goes on for a few years. And that's not a very good example, but, but irreconcilable differences as far as what we want in our life. Um, I wouldn't hesitate to leave. It would be, I love you, I always will, and I need to leave now. And he would, support me and the other way around i'd support him and we'd be friends for life even if he remarried um, he's my friend so i get to meet his next wife and if he loves and respects her i'm sure i would too so he can't leave me he can't leave me behind because love is the power it lives and what i'm thinking 
And believing against that would leave the experience of a lack of love, but love doesn't change. It doesn't grow. It doesn't diminish awareness, you know, and that's, that's why um, I invite people to the work. And what's incredible about the work, Katie, is I have questions on questions on questions about relationships. Uh, Katie, why is it so easy to, you know, be frustrated and have resentment towards somebody, but not, you know, practice gratitude or, you know, why do people cheat or listen? And it all comes back to the work. It comes back to awareness. It comes back to self-inquiry, which is incredible. But, but here's a question that the work isn't going to answer. You have to answer it, uh, Katie. What's something that you probably want to leave behind for your children that you didn't have growing up? Unconditional love. Yeah, it's a practice. It's a practice. And there's a maturity about it. It's not just going, oh, honey, you're right. I love you. It's not like that. It's got to, you know, it's, it's, it's got to pass five, the test of five grandchildren. Now my children have got it, but they have raised children. Now it's my five grandchildren, you know, that it's, um, oh, I just love that so much. I love that so much when they ask me something I I'm with them like I am with you any question they would ask we get to discover what that is in me at the very same time because there's no there's no wall it's just fresh and and they trust that and find it funny and silly and and like other grandmothers not very valuable sometimes and Eh, okay, other times. And it is as they see it and believe it to be. So all I have to give them is my unconditional love. Beautiful. Katie, we are going to our last two segments. And this segment is called basically fill it in. So I'm going to give you a sentence and you're just going to fill in with one word. Okay. 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 So a great home begins with love of self. Being a great friend starts with understanding. I am very proud of I just have to sit with that one. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Humans have an incredible ability to survive. <laughs> Humans is a word for an uh, ego. Humane is, is different. It's just the same word, different pronunciation. I think, you know, my experiencing as you say it. If I wasn't in leadership or an author, I'd be same <laughs> all right and here's our final segment so you're going to answer with one sentence or less the biggest compliment someone can pay me is i'm just thinking hello a, a beautiful, genuine greeting. Um, what currently brings you the most joy? Waking up in this head. Beautiful. And now, Byron Katie, here is your final question. So we fast forward to your very last day on earth and you get to have one meal and you get to put anything on that plate. What foods are you going to be eating? Hmm. Um, it would be... Um, a salad with um, a really green salad with a lot of purple and white cabbage in it and um, and a salad dressing I make with um, that that yeast gosh what is it it's nutritional yeast right yes yeah yeah and um, 
and uh yeah that's that's it oh my gosh yes well if you guys enjoyed byron katie's episode the same way i did if you ever see her in the street go run home make her that exact salad that's the way we're gonna say thank you to her everyone go check out thework.com byronkatie.com she has numerous books um a thousand names for joy a mind at home with itself loving what is and if you guys enjoyed this show just dig into her work because with the work it's just going to make you like like we said earlier byron katie a kinder more compassionate and just more aware of why you act the way you act and why you see the world the way you do so byron katie again like i told you i can sing you praises for the next three hours so thank you so much for coming on to my show and i told byron katie this um before we started recording but people get into this business of interviewing people and running shows like this to interview people like her so the fact that she came on the julian j franco show i am I, I just feel so good my shoulders are back my chin is up i feel very confident and uh thank you for being a perfect guest oh thank you for being one of the people i am grateful for in this world thank you julian mm -hmm.